You know what people keep telling us? The two types of car that you can absolutely never take a long road trip across India in are an EV or a sports car. Well, guess what we're about to do today? That's right, we're about to do a road trip in a car that is both an EV and a sports car. And this is not some weekend sojourn just out of town. Oh no, this is the mighty K2K Kashmir, where we are right now to Kanyakumari, a journey of 4,000 kilometers. Our journey from the northern to southern tips of India will take us from twisty mountain roads to wide highways, busy cities to treacherous terrain, and everything in between. We've planned it meticulously, but even then, you never know what can happen. In fact, just before we set off, we are informed that part of the highway in Ramban en route to Jammu has been wiped out by a devastating landslide and it will take another day to reopen. But an extra day in Kashmir? A good chance to take in the sights of Srinagar, I think, while also getting to know the Taikan a little bit. We drive into town, visit some shops and soak in the grandeur of the magnificent Dal Lake before calling it an evening. But since we have another night to charge the car, why not have a little fun along the way? Now we're going up a hill, which is obviously to the detriment of range. So I might as well enjoy it with a little bit of Sport Plus. <laughs> it is a Porsche after all. The next morning, it's time to flag off, load up both the surprisingly commodious boots, unplug the charger, and then it's time to go. And immediately, the fascinating new world of long-distance electric motoring starts to make itself felt. So in an EV, a simple principle to remember is that when you're going uphill, you will lose charge and when you're going downhill, you can regen quite a lot of it. And right off the bat, we're at a pretty steep downhill uh, journey, so I'm going to make the most of that and seeing if I can recoup some range just at the start. The range when I started was 372 kilometers indicated. I'm already up just in a matter of minutes, honestly, to 385. And it's going higher. I hope the whole drive is like this. I feel like we won't have to charge. Leaving behind the beautiful Dal Lake and Srinagar with it, we're now on our first stretch of highway. Time to set the tone for the rest of the trip, I think. So as we leave our starting point of Srinagar in Kashmir, I got to tell you right at the outset that this is not some sort of hyper miling run where we're trying to maximize range or anything like that. Oh no, no. We are doing this as comfortably as possible. Nor is this a speed record. We're not trying to get from Kashmir to Kanyakumari in record time or anything like that. Again, on this front, we're going to take it nice and easy. Don't want to push the car too hard also because of course, range is uh, something to always keep in mind and one eye is always on that little 
range meter over there. For now though, the highway out of Srinagar is very nice. It's not one of those super well-made, concretized six-laners that we'll probably find uh, further down this journey, but it's relatively smooth with the odd section of uh, broken patches. This is still early on, although let's see how it goes later. The roads up here are heavily militarized and it's not unusual to be stopped for long spells to allow convoys to pass through. It happens on more than a few occasions, which gives the local sellers of apples, shawls and cricket bats enough opportunities to accost us with their best possible deals. We soon come upon the 8.45 km long Kazigand Banihal Tunnel, which was opened in 2021 and has cut the journey down by 16 km. And even in an EV, it's rather mesmerizing. Now, of course, one of the biggest thrills of driving in a sports car in a tunnel is usually the sound. And of course, you don't get that here in the Taycan. But that said, there is still a lot of joy to be derived from squeezing the throttle, just getting a little <laughs> zip on. Tunnel vision? Oh yeah, it's a real thing. Fun as driving through an arrow straight tunnel was though, really where the Taycan comes into its own is when the mountain roads get twisty. Oh my gosh. What a view. This is an incredible ribbon of tarmac up in the mountains. And apart from the fact that there are just a few too many trucks on this road right now for my liking, it's still a tremendous road. And now that I've got a bit of a clear patch up here, I think I'm going to take my range hat off for a little while and let the Taycan be a Porsche. The turn-in on this thing is just so sharp. You'd think this being the big, heavy, electric GT model that they'd probably go a little easy on it, but no, this is a Porsche steering through and through. Now, Porsche makes front-engine cars, mid-engine cars, rear-engine cars, and now here we have one with no engine at all, but a heavy battery pack down in the floor. And they seem to have nailed that too. This is not a light car but you'd never guess that from behind the wheel. The fun was short-lived though as we soon reached Ramban, the site of those awful landslides. The devastation is plain to see and the authorities have done a tremendous job of cleaning it up in just a day. In the Taycan, it's air suspension to the rescue as we dip our wheels into the muck and crawl through. Relieved to reach Jammu soon after sunset. The following morning, car fully charged, something new popped up on screen. We had the car charged to 100% when we set off from Srinagar and it showed an indicated range of 370 kilometers. And now on our second leg, again charged to 100%, it's showing a range of 408 kilometers. And that means I'm more efficient a driver than I thought possible. I'm actually increasing the range of the car as I go because of course it adjusts to your driving style and displays the range based on how you've been driving. Can I get that number higher than 408? Let's wait and see. Gloating complete, it's time to hit the road. So while yesterday we spent a lot of time in the mountains with lots of elevation changes, which of course make a huge difference to an EV's range, Today, we're at the start of what I think is going to be a lot of long stretches of highway. And all this flat, straight highway driving got me thinking about efficiency again. Hmm. 
Now usually the advantage of an IC car on the highway is that you have gears and lots of variable things in order to get more efficiency out of the car when you're just cruising. In an EV you generally don't have that, but not the Taycan. Nope, the Taycan is one of the few EVs that has gears. It has two speeds in its gearbox. The first gear is for general everyday use, but when it can tell that you're cruising out on the highway, it goes into second gear. In fact, you can actually feel that little upshift uh, when it happens, and you can even feel it shift back down. I'm sure if it only had a one-speed gearbox like most EVs, I wouldn't be able to drive so efficiently. This is also the first time we stopped mid-journey for a quick charge at a newly installed Tata-powered DC station in the town of Kishangar in Punjab. And this is something to keep in mind if you're charging mid-journey. Even on this 25 kilowatt DC fast charger, charging around 50% took 2 hours. So it was a good thing that there was a restaurant attached. It really was starting to feel like this whole drive to Chandigarh would be a breeze. But as night fell, the skies opened up and suddenly it really wasn't. I don't know if you can see this, but I sure as hell can't see anything. We're on our way into Chandigarh right now and it is an absolute washout. There is so much rain, no street lights and lots of standing water. We just went through quite a lot of it. Ha! Huh. Well, no one thing an EV doesn't have an exhaust uh, and therefore you don't have to worry about water going back up into the exhaust but of course it is still a pretty scary situation to be in. So hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, it won't be this bad all the way. <laughs> My word. The worst was yet to come though, as when we reached Zirakpur, we were suddenly met with about half a kilometer of standing water, at least a foot deep. We pushed through, tense but also confident in the Taycan and its electric powertrain. Mercifully, things cleared up as we neared Chandigarh and checked into our hotel for the night. The next morning, on the occasion of Independence Day, the Taj Chandigarh had a ceremonial flag hoisting just before we could flag off. So today we have a relatively easy stretch ahead of us, I hope. It's uh, Chandigarh to Delhi, 262 kilometers, which should be a piece of cake uh, for the Taycan because it's been showing about 410, 420 uh, at full charge in terms of range available. And we're already about 35 kilometers out and I've still got about 380 showing. Uh, on the available range, so I have zero range anxiety at this point. And what's more, the roads are good so far, touch wood. Uh, we have had a few surprises even on the best of roads on this journey so far. But hopefully it will stay that way all the way into New Delhi. Right enough, we reached Delhi nice and early, which gave us a chance to go into town and have a breather. However, it was when we went to charge the Taycan at night that something rather cool happened. We bumped into the organizers and participants of Cars & Coffee New Delhi. And the next thing you know, we're at a full-on performance car meet. Being the only EV there, the Taycan sure drew a lot of attention. But more than anything else, it was just great swapping stories with a group of like-minded car enthusiasts. Well, after a fun evening out on Independence Day in our nation's capital and a very relaxing stay at the Taj Palace, New Delhi, it's time to hit the road again on, sadly, what is going to be my last leg of the Taycan K2K drive. 
I'm a little sad about that, but hey, it's let me get to know this car a whole lot better. Today we're going from Delhi to Jaipur, so catch us on the road if you can. We couldn't leave without a quick stop at India Gate. But then of course, big city life caught up with us. It's a Tuesday after a long weekend and that means it's business as usual. And by that, I mean loads of your classic Delhi traffic. But I suppose this is perhaps the first time I'm getting to experience the Taycan in a proper urban scenario. That's where a lot of Taycans will spend the majority of their time. But that said, uh, the Taycan makes it surprisingly easy uh, in town. For instance, the steering is pretty light. And then there is the added benefit, the surprising added benefit of that classic Porsche styling. And that is the two front flanks that pop up just above the bonnet line. They let you place this car so accurately. I know exactly where the corners of the car are and it lets you judge everything just perfectly. I suppose that's also what makes the 911 such an easy car to live with in town. It's the little things, you know? It's also here that the theory that EVs are more efficient in the city rather than the highway kind of falls flat a little bit. You see, even with the regen set to on, I just cannot match the efficiency I got out on the highway. Yesterday, I actually managed to max this car out at 7.1 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which is the highest I've ever done in this car, or in any EV for that matter. And that was out on the highway, lots of cruising with just momentum carrying me along and very little input from the battery or the motor. And here today, in Delhi's bumper to bumper traffic, I just cannot match that. I'm struggling to even reach five kilometers per kilowatt hour. So let's hope we don't have to endure too much of this before we hit the highway and are on our way to Jaipur proper. I looked down at the trip meter and realized we were closing in on 1,000 kilometers of this journey and all of it with me at the wheel. And that made me reflect a little on what the Taycan has been like. First things first, this is not just the most time and kilometers I've clocked in an EV. It's the most time and kilometers I've clocked in a Porsche. And that's something really special. And what's really impressive is that the Taycan can go very easily from being the quintessential Porsche to being just a car when you want it to be, you know? Sometimes a car just needs to be that. A comfortable place for you to cover lots and lots of miles. It feels, and this is one of the best compliments I could pay it really, like some of the best luxury cars out there. We knew it was going to be good to drive, we knew it was going to be quick. But this other dimension, I did not see that coming. I thought my journey would end with smooth sailing, but as we rolled into Jaipur, the road suddenly deteriorated considerably, with huge potholes and craters popping up everywhere. Finally, a narrow village road would lead us to our night stop, where I would park up for the very last time on this journey. Adios everyone, I'm heading back home and tomorrow it's over to Jay.